Welcome everybody, welcome to Kerbal Space Program and this is Realism Overhaul with Real Solar System installed. Now I have a number of other optional mods and suggested mods as well installed but I want to just concentrate on just two of those modifications right now. One of them is called Dang It Continued. Now it's a continuation of Dang It. Now for people who don't know what Dang It is it is a part failure modification and the reason why I installed it over top of Realism Overhaul is because Realism Overhaul itself, RO itself, has a failure mod itself installed with it and it's called Test Flight but it only covers engines, engine failures whereas Dang It covers all parts so I installed it over the top, I tested it, it seems to work okay together. They don't seem to cause each other problems. And the other modification I wanted to concentrate on, the, the two I wanted to sort of mention right now before I start. And that's Orbital Decay. Now for my part, I don't understand why the RO team have not included that sort of effect or simulation of Orbital Decay in Realism Overhaul itself. So I've installed Orbital Decay myself. For me I can't play RO without uh, an RSS without Orbital Decay. Okay that's just two of the optional mods, well not optional, it's actually completely not optional not including the list of suggested or optional mods with RO but I've installed it myself anyway. Okay, that's just the two of the mods I wanted to cover. I've also installed USI's modular, co modular colonization system as well, cable planetary based systems, and lots of other mods as well. Now, even though RL comes with FASA and Blue Dog and Soviet rockets already installed with it, I'm not going to be playing this game as a reenactment of human history space flight, space flight. I'm not going to be covering our own space sort of spacecraft, our own space history. I'm going to do something else with the parts, I mean. But what I will be doing I'm going to attempt to create not recreate but create what was known as the Space Transportation System. Now before you start thinking I'm talking about Space Shuttle, Space STS, that is not what STS was supposed to be. The Space Shuttle as you know it was actually a cut down version of the envisaged multi-vehicle program which is what the Space Transportation System was supposed to be. The first part was a fully reusable Space, space Shuttle either a single stage or two stage to orbit spacecraft or space plane. The other part would be something like what's being called Nexus, which is like a bolt up version of the Saturn V for heavy launches. The other part would be an orbital ferry or an orbital tug basically. Now there'd be two versions of that, it'd be the manned and also unmanned. And then there was supposed to be a nuclear powered shuttle. Now, the term shuttle is probably a little bit sort of misleading. It wasn't a space shuttle, as in the space shuttle, as in a space plane. It was actually a nuclear powered interplanetary spacecraft which would go between the Earth, the Moon, and beyond. Okay, so. I've installed an optional pack, a contract pack. In fact, I've installed a number of different contract packs. When I did it, originally I tested historical contracts pack, but it was causing performance issues. So what I've done is I've installed historical progression contract pack. As well as planetary base contracts, a number of other contracts as well which you'll see anyway once I start. Okay, so this is going to be a long-term playthrough. I'm going to attempt to colonize 
the moon. I'm going to build orbital stations, recreate the STS, or create what was supposed to be the space transportation system as the full program. A lunar base, a lunar orbital base, and beyond. I'm going to try and get to Mars as well. So, hope you join me for that. If at any point during this playthrough, any of the videos you enjoyed the videos, please click like. Subscribe for more, obviously. And if you really like the videos, share them. Share them with your friends. That encourages me to do a lot more. And as I said, this is going to be a long term playthrough. I'm not going to abandon this playthrough. Unless it's sort of like if I encounter game breaking bugs, which I can't see happening. I've already tested this quite thoroughly. There don't seem to be too many problems. Okay, so let's get started. This is uh, obviously I'm going to use it. I'm going to be using the Earth calendar. So we're starting in January 1951. That's just a rough approximation. Okay, so let's get. Started. Oh, I also have, um, as you can probably tell by listening to the music, I've installed Soundtrack Editor. And I've put a number of optional music top tunes and what have you. Basically, I've just mixed all sorts of stuff in. What you listen to right now is actually an album called Still a Drone. And it's free to download and you can use it in your own videos here on YouTube if you want to make any videos of your own. But it's called Still a Drone. So just do an internet search for that and you'll probably find them. A little bit hard to find actually, the actual albums themselves, but if you dig deep enough, you'll be able to find them. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so welcome to the Space Center Overview. Now, some of you mm, will be forgiven, could be forgiven, for thinking that this is. The Kerbal Space Center. Now I know it looks very similar, in fact it looks exactly the same. But it's actually Kennedy Space Center on the planet Earth. Having real solar system installed. So this actually shares the same longitude and latitude coordinates of the real Kennedy Space Center. Uh, obviously there are limits as to what you can do when it comes to modifi modifying KSP. Uh, city texture in the background, there's an actual city, which is the texture. From the air it looks actually quite good. Obviously at ground level it doesn't look too sort of convincing. Uh, there is a mod called Kerbal Constructs, which allow you to add statics, but uh, there's already a lot of modifications installed when it comes to realism of all, especially if you actually add as many to as I have. As far as the recommended and suggested mods are concerned, that's a lot of modifications added in. That's a lot of config files for KSP's sort of engine Unity to handle, and things do cost quite a lot more. This version, tracking stations and twenty thousand. And this is just the first layer of upgrades. Okay, now I do have one critical modification that I don't know if I'm going to keep installed. It's called background processing. Now, stock KSP is not capable of. Well, it's actually it is capable. Unity Engine is actually capable of doing it. Obviously, as a mod wouldn't be able to do it, but uh, it's not actually able itself natively to track electrical charge or any other resource being used in the background when a vessel is actually unloaded. What that means is if you put a vessel up in orbit in stock KSP, you say you have a thousand electric charge. Then you go away, you know full well it's using at least ten electric charge a minute. You go back to the space center that unloads the craft. Then, time warp, a month or a year, or even 10 years, 
a hundred years, then go back to the spacecraft, load it back in, and the electric charge will be unused. It will still have a full electric charge, whereas it should have actually run out. This is obviously, if it has solar panels or RTGs, or any other sort of electrical charge generating equipment, then that would be different. As long as it has enough of charge capacity to keep up with the drain, with the actual drain itself. But KSP stock does not keep track of anything at all in the background. Now I have something called background processing installed. Now apart from that, I know full well that TAC life support and for instance USI life support and USI's colonization system actually does keep track of its own resources but it only applies to its own parts doesn't actually track anyone else's parts including the stocks the stock games uh, probe cores so what I'm going to try to do I, I, I don't know if it actually works if background processing actually does track I know it tracks electric charge usage so it will flatten the batteries when, uh, when this vessel is unloaded or loaded so when it's unloaded if I send a probe or if it's a satellite or anything like that if it's not equipped with solar panels it should actually deplete the charge but I don't know if it keeps track of the actual let's say that's like what I said solar panels I don't know if it actually keeps track of things like that so we'll have to see so I may or may not install well sorry uninstall background processing for manned flights it's not a problem because tech life support keeps track of all of that in the background including water oxygen food as well as electric charge and also solar panels and also you have greenhouses in space or on a base it'll keep track of the resources being sort of being grown there so that's not a problem so well, manned flights shouldn't be a problem at all but I'm talking about unmanned flights things that don't actually have tack lights put or base parts it may not actually track those correctly it will track the electric charge usage on unmanned flights like I said but I don't know if it actually will tra actually track solar panels or RTGs okay so let me just show you around that's basically all these two these two first parts these two videos are for just to show you just familiarize you with what I have actually installed okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you the tracking system I'm going to show you a real solar system really quickly so I'm going to the tracking station okay so here we are at the tracking station as you can see it's the first time I've come into here at least in this particular install and there's Jean just explaining things you know tap the M key while in flight but you'd actually get this real you'd actually get this tracking station when you're in flight you want to get a basic map okay so this is real solar system this is earth and the line in the background is actually the path of the orbital path of the moon so as you can see we've got a lot of tracking stations we have USN South Point which is Pacific tracking station Oh, yeah, Kauai, Hawaii. This gives the range is 1.72 gigameters. Now, technically, none of these tracking stations actually existed, and if they did, they wouldn't have that level of tracking, that level of power. Historically, a lot of these tracking stations, a lot of these actual launch sites are actually pretty modern. The two launch sites in Japan. We have China, Russia, obviously Russia's there. We have Chanchan, which is in China. We have Wenchang, two terameters. That's a heck of a distance. Qingchang, which is China again. And we have Jingguang, China again. None of those actually existed in 1951, are we? 1951? Yep, 1st of January 1951. Now the thing is, the technology I actually start with was a bit of a mixed bag. There were engines in there which didn't actually exist in 1951 as such. 
There's also an engine which existed well before 1951, that's the A4. Which is the... Well, it's the engine that powered the V2 Vengeance rocket, used by the Germans during World War II. The thing is, about the V2 engine in there, uh, it's a little bit overpowered. Okay, so there is a, definitely a tracking station which is actually missing. So if Nathan Kels are watching this, you may want to add the uh, Jodrell Bank in England, just here. A bit of a snippet of information. It was the only tracking station, even by the 1960s, which could track both Soviet and United States missions to the moon and back and beyond. It was the only tracking station that was actually powerful enough to do that. And it's not there, and yet there's Woomera in Australia, which is another British launch site. There's Woomera. Used for British satellite launches, which weren't very much. There wasn't very many of them. So basically what you do in real solar system is that you can actually change your position and change launch sites. This is really useful. If you want to do a less complicated insertion burn to intercept the moon. Because normally you'd have to do a, what is called a dog leg. If you want to launch on US Cape, Canav Can Cape Canaveral, you have to do a dog leg. If you're pushing slightly south, and then doing a dog leg like that. So that has my mouse pointers. You would have to insert. If you don't do an insertion burn while actually in space, you it basically it would cost you more energy, cost you a lot more energy to do that once you're actually up there. Once you're in orbit, it costs a lot of energy to change your phase to match the moon. So it's actually better if you do all in one, as in kill two birds with one stone. So you would push south and do a dogleg. I've never ever done that. All I've, all I've actually done in real solar system is launch at a particular time, let's say when Kennedy's about here, and then do a burn insertion burn, do a circularization burn, or sometimes even just a direct burn. Once it's here, the moon's about there, so I would perform an insertion burn about here. And it doesn't matter that we're going across, because by the time we get to there, the moon will be there, we'll get caught by the moon's gravity. It's not very easy to, to actually come back though, or something like that, from a trajectory like that. So it's actually better if you wait until you're about there. Like I said, Kennedy doesn't get directly onto the equator or directly cross the path of the moon. It does have a slight sort of difference in phase. It's not too difficult to actually do, but it can be a little bit sort of daunting at first. Okay, so what you do, if you want to change position on the map, you just have to select on left click. If I get rid of KCT's window over here just for a second, you actually see some explanation. So there's Wilmera. There's a lot of information here. So you've got the different information when it comes to French Guy and Space Centre, European Spaceport. It's a funny place to have a European Spaceport in South America, but never mind. That's simply because it's closer to the equator. So it makes it much easier to actually... So we've got US Wallops. Like I said, on Eastern Shore, Virginia, approximately 100 miles north northeast of Norfolk. It's operated by the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Primarily as a rocket launch site. Uh, it's a site to support science and exploration missions for NASA and other federal agencies. We've got White Sands, which is the missile range. 
I believe this is where most of the uh, sounding rockets were actually launched as well and also the V2 rockets were launched I believe the United States took uh, I think it's about 50, 50 or 52 something like that V2 rockets after the war and they tested them in the White Sands missile range so it's got a lot of things there as well, including Big Bertha, which is a nuclear cannon. Yeah, nuclear cannon. Remotely fired, for obvious reasons. Okay, so what you have to do, once you have selected, you know, you can just click on it, like I showed you just there. Or you can just do it through the menu up here. And all you do, once you've done that, you have to just click Leave Facility. So here we are, the White Sands. Now obviously, like I said, every single launch site will look like Cable Space Center. There is nothing you can do about that. You could try to install Cable Constructs, like I said, and it lets you play statics. The problem with Cable Constructs is, is it made, this isn't actually made for a real solar system. So, real solar system is like 10 times the scale. So the statics will be 10 times the distance between each other. So let's say you've got a launch site, launch pad. Then you have some, uh, let's say Wing Chang in, in China. That, has it, uh, that, ha that does actually have a cable constructs config for it. The actual real Wing Chang launch site in China. But the range, the actual range, the distance between the construction building, the assembly building, and the launch site will be 10 times further away, so it'll be right over here. It'll be huge. It'll be a massive distance. Basically, it would the entire space center would cover. In fact, any static buildings that, let's say, like a town or a city, each building will be 10 times further apart than it should be. So the, the area, surface area, will be 10 times it's supposed to be. So, yeah. So, trying to put cable constructs over the top of real solar system isn't really a good idea. I want to try to avoid as many bugs as possible as well, so I don't want anything sort of endangering the install. Like I said at the beginning, this is a lot I'm gonna I'm planning on this to be a long term. So I'm gonna try building multiple stations, multiple land surface bases whilst on the moon and beyond. I don't know how successful it's going to be, but I hope it's going to be successful. Okay, so another little point about real solar system. If you want to try and play real solar system overhaul, there's something else you need to sort of bear in mind. If I upgrade the VAB at Kennedy, and I want to launch something here at White Sands, the VAB will not be upgraded here. So if I upgrade another building, let's say any of the launch sites, I'll upgrade its launch pad to the top which means unlimited tonnage this is limited to 40 tons then I want to launch something from another site like here but the, the craft itself the launcher weighs more than 40 tons I won't be able to launch it from here you have to upgrade each of your launch sites separately you can also build multiple sort of launchers rockets from say say I want to build something from here and then I want to build something else at Kennedy. I can actually have them both building at the same time and KCT will actually keep track of them. When one is finished it will actually tell you down here on the alerts what it what it actually is, what will it completed. As soon as it's completed it will actually pop up here. I'll just tell you where it is and what's what it actually is. As in what's completed and where it is. I'll show you that once I start on the actual launching themselves, actually building the launchers. Which will be sounding rockets. So I should really be launching them from here, from White Sands. I know full well I will definitely need to upgrade and launch equatorial orbits from another launch site. I will attempt to do that from Kennedy. But if it, becomes, if it proves to be too difficult then I will definitely try to upgrade at least one other launch site, launch complex, close to the equator, 
It could be the French Guiana one. The European Space Agency's it's the European Space Port, as it's uh, commonly known as. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of here. I have to go back to the tracking station, and then we can do it through the menu like I showed you before. Or we can just click on the map. Now back to US Cape Canaveral, and then you exit the map. Okay, so we are back at the Kennedy Space Center. Okay. Now, as I said at the beginning, I've installed a number of contract packs on top of our P zeros contract pack. Now, obviously, we have the tech tree, which is our P zero as well, which is real progression zero, which is the tech tree and the career mode for realism overhaul. But I also have. Let me just go into the mission control. Uh -huh. Morning, Jane. Well, actually, it's evening, Jean, isn't it? It's night time. So I have field science installed. I also have historical progression. Now, I did have historical contracts, but it proved to be a little bit buggy, especially when it comes to performance. It appears to be like the performance issues that a lot of people face is actually down to the amount of contracts that are running at the same time, because a contract will actually check the status of your career every few seconds so the more contracts that are doing that the more pauses you're going to be facing so you install contract historical contracts and put historical progression in there instead a little bit lighter so let's have remote tech which is a must have as far as real soul systems concerned it's not much of a challenge if you don't have remote tech Okay, I'll show you. That's just available ones. So, our base and stations, field reset, historical progression, remote tech, RP0, scan sat, and this one here, slightly ahead of time, is Mission Controller 2. Now, Mission Controller 2 is another, I won't say it's a contract pack, it does have its own contracts, but it, it, uh, it adds contracts. And the ability for it to give you contracts to repair satellites. It has a, it has a number of parts, one of which is the uh, repair bay. Which, if you fit to your bases, your space stations, your satellites, and your probes, it, you will get contracts specifically for each part. It will just randomly generate a, f a, f a repair contract if you actually have that part, the repair bay attached to one of your craft but right now obviously it's offering Vostok which it's 1951 I don't believe Vostok actually existed till 1960 let me see that 1961 sorry mm. there was some test flights I suppose it probably 1960 probably actually existed, but it's a 3k spacecraft was launched on April the 12th, 1961. And that's Yoga Garin. And that's the first human to not only enter space, but the first crossing to outer space at the, to the, at the same time. He also was the first human being to orbit the Earth. Only one, only one single orbit, but it was enough. And this is another problem that I've noticed. If you take a contract, sometimes it will have a very limited amount of time to complete that. So if we com if we took this now, we'd have a hundred days to complete it. There's nowhere near enough time. It's going to take years, in-game years, to actually get to anywhere near this level of technology. So that's on the point. So at some point, I will probably have to develop a mock-up of a mission. To make sure I can actually accomplish it before I actually accept the contract. Yeah. That's just one other thing. So I've got Clamp Study of Earth, First Flight Sounding Rockets, the two remote tech contracts for a satellite network, the third contract, which from remote tech, which I don't know why that keeps disappearing. Point a dish out from Earth. That's just a generic mission. Just to send, point a dish out to the moon. 
Move it to the middle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dream agrees. He knows. Point a dish to the fish at the blah I can't want to say anything. Point a dish at the moon. So we're wanting to we to point a dish at the moon so we can start sending some probes that way, which is all you need to do. There's all the ground stations you've got. We've got first large now this is the first of the uh, RP Zero Korea missions. This is just get something off the ground. Pretty much the same as stock first contract. That's ones that are active. So one crew speed record three hundred fifty minutes. Blah, blah 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 blah. And all these are the crude, crude, uncrewed and uncrewed. We have the four crude achievements. These are just achievements. And we have absolutely nothing in the archive because we haven't started yet. Okay, so that's the contract pack that I've shown you. This is historical progression. So I've early pimmed rocket tree which is basically sounding rockets mere contracts jacks of contracts and that's space station soviet space program usl early us missions nasa contracts project gemini apollo skylab and so on and so forth special missions skylab skylab and mir two very interesting contract sections there so we also have field research experiments. It's very just various climate study experiments, things like that around the planet Earth, but also the moon and everywhere else that you can visit. So bases and stations. So add a science lab to a base. Add extra crew capacity to a base. Base communication issues. Delayed. There. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've lost contact with the base. Send an engineer. Send an engineer to check it out. So. The RNG must like you. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea. Probably learn about that as we go along. Must have a base with some crew. Obviously we don't have that. So base population. <laughs> now one oh what I did actually want to try to play with it's called civili civilian population. But unfortunately it's not being updated in time to start this playthrough. Which is a crying shame because I, I, it's also rather buggy I think at for, right now. A little bit more buggy than it's actually ever been in its uh, existence. So yeah, civilian population, no. Can't do that. I've got RPs here which I've already shown you. No I haven't. Got milestones and crude orbit contracts and various things like that. It's a pretty big, pretty big. These uh, Gene keeps turning the music off. I don't know why. Got scan set. So bio study, yeah, bio scan, resolution, high resolution scan, do a low resolution scan of various bodies. No different than if you use those in stock. It's no different. One thing I can't look at is the Mission Controller too, because that's a completely different way of using contracts. It just offers contracts through this window, but you can't actually see what the as in what the entire pack looks like, because it's controlled by an external plugin. Okay, so I think that's about it. Well, for missions anyway. So that's the contract packs I've put in. It's not too many on top of RP0. But I think it's just, I like to just fill it out a little bit. You know, just, just sort of flesh out the contracts. Just make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more varied than just the RP0 and remote tech contracts. Okay, it's so going back to the Space Center view. And I'll just show you very quickly. Obviously, everything else is exactly the same. No other difference. Let's show you the tech tree. As you can see, it's a little bit more. What's the word? Involved. It's pretty damn big, actually. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me, listening to me, rabbit on. Uh, 
Click subscribe if you want to follow this play this playthrough. It's gonna be very interesting. Really interesting. I've not actually been anywhere in the real solar system up beyond the moon. So that's gonna be quite a challenge for me to go beyond the moon. In fact, probably hitting the moon right now is probably a challenge because obviously I haven't got the uh, the tech. Okay, so like I said, thank you for watching. If you click if you click like share and subscribe to my channel and encourage me a lot more to do even more okay so thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this series as much as i enjoy playing it i hope and thank you bye bye and take care